Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land and hosted by myself, Raleen Marks. And I'm so happy that uh, after a couple of weeks of very sporadic broadcasting, we are able to have spent the full week with you guys. Now, as you know, we bring you those top stories from Israel and surrounds every Monday to Thursday right here. And if you happen to see us, please do us a solid and share us. Yep, we are facing those social media sensors that everybody says doesn't exist, but really they do. So if you see our content, please like us and share us. Meanwhile, on with those headlines. And the big question everybody is asking is, which country will be the next to normalize ties with Israel? Well, a senior official in Israel's foreign ministry hinted that it could be Oman. While he didn't specifically say Oman could be the next one, he did say that Israel is speaking to all countries in the Middle East and in Africa. But however, the name of Oman is being touted around. Israel, Oman and Jordan currently all cooperate and participate in a joint water project. Meanwhile, on the subject of the Abraham Accords, the Knesset will welcome next week Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump to the inauguration of the Abraham Accords caucus. Jared Kushner was instrumental in helping to broker the Abraham Accords. In other news, we now go to the United Nations Human Rights Council, where UN Watch, a United Nations watchdog, they largely monitor the goings on at the UN and its various agencies, has appealed to the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to intervene in what they see as censorship of presenting UNRWA, that is the United Nations Relief Works Agency's gross acts of anti-Semitism. Now, many of you are familiar with UNRWA. UNRWA are largely responsible for, amongst other things, education in the Gaza Strip and the disputed West Bank. Well, UN Watch's director, Hillel Neuer, uh, tweeted the other day that he was about to present the report that UN Watch had done on UNRWA and the anti-Semitic incitement by at least 110 staff members when he was interrupted and cut off by the UNHRC president. Now, the UNHRC is the UN Human Rights Council, and it is their mandate to uphold human rights around the world. And UN Watch have called them out on many transgressions, not just with regards to anti-Semitism, but also with regards to uh, places like Venezuela, places in Africa, and all around the world where human rights transgressions are largely ignored. Now, the president of the UNHRC called the presentation inflammatory and insulting. However, just days before another event related to this occurred, Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, was about to bring in physical evidence when he was forcibly prevented from doing so. He had a large picture which uh, was an example of some of the anti-Semitic and hateful rhetoric uh, given by a member of UNRWA. And in this case, it was a picture of Adolf Hitler and he was not allowed to do this. We hope that the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who has on a number of occasions stated that he is committed to fighting growing anti-Semitism around the world, steps in and allows for both the UN Watch and Ambassador Erdogan to present on incitement and anti-Semitism within UNRWA. And our last story takes us to the Temple Mount as per request of one of our viewers. This is for you, Chaviva. Something that kind of slipped under the news radar just a couple of weeks ago was news that an Israeli court has said that it is legal and it's not a criminal offense to pray silently on the Temple Mount. Now, the Temple Mount is a flashpoint area in Israel. It's a very, very sensitive area. It is the site of the first two temples that were destroyed that are very, very holy and significant to Jews. And 
on what remains of the Temple Mount has uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock been built. Now a rabbi was uh, previously banned from praying on the Temple Mount, something that he does on a daily basis. He was upholding uh, and, and, uh, uh, or, or he was seen as contravening an edict by Israel's police. However, a court has overruled it saying that if he does so and he does so silently without uh, saying anything aloud or drawing attention to himself, he is not contravening anything criminal. So those are your top stories as we head into the weekend. And don't forget, we have a whole lot of original content on our website at www.layoftheland.online. You can read the wonderful story of Witso Ruth. This is a Christian branch of the Women's International Zionist Organization based in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Read all about the wonderful work that they are doing to support Israel. And a shout out to Galia who wrote the article. You can also view it on our Facebook page. Now just a reminder that our content is being censored and restricted by those in power at Facebook. So if you see us please like share our content so that we do get that much needed exposure and like and follow our Facebook page. If you are joining us on YouTube and you like our content please don't forget to like, share and subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe button. And if you're on Twitter, where many of us are, drop us a line and don't forget to follow us at Lay of the Land 5. So from the team at Lay of the Land, I'm Raleigh Marks wishing you Sof Shavu and Naim a wonderful weekend. May it be peaceful, safe and healthy and we'll catch up with each other next week.